Hello everybody. Welcome to a Friday Worlds of ZZT live stream where today we're going to be playing Fantasy World Z I got the title wrong. Fantasy World Dizzy ZZT. This is a game by Nader who converted three of these old Dizzy games from their British microcomputer form into ZZT. Which has its pros and cons, surprisingly. This was the game that I went with from our poll, in which the theme of a remake or a demake of a non-ZCT game in ZCT won. And it's a fun one. I've played it before for a closer look, and I've already actually streamed the other two of Nader's Dizzy games, which is specifically why I went with this one. At least of the three. That theme, depending on how literal you want to be, can be pretty tough. There aren't a lot of actual attempts of making the exact existing game into ZZT, but there are plenty of highly inspired fan games and things. There's like King's Quest ZZT, Quest for Glory. There are numerous subpar action games based on Doom and Quake and Goldeneye. You want to be extra general? I mean, there's the Yoshi games and things. There's a Mario 64 ZZT, not a platformer. Mario shoots lions. I don't know if that counts. It is surprisingly playable, which is why I really like these games. They're act they're a lot of fun to go back to. They're generally all pretty chill. Uh, Nader did these one by one over I think a period of like two years and then eventually just compiled all three into a Dizzy collection, the ZZT Dizzy games. If you are going to try these for yourself, absolutely go with the ones in that collection. There's some small updates to them. I think it's Magic Land Dizzy. It has a really out-of-place boss fight at the end that relies on normal ZZT shooting mechanics. It comes completely out of nowhere, and it's extremely difficult and bad. And I believe in the compilation instead the wizard just has a tar heart attack and dies on the spot and you win which is a significant improvement from a gameplay perspective but fantasy world is pretty straightforward we're just gonna dive right into it so i don't sit staring at this silent title screen forever right it here to codemasters hey 1991 it's a ZZT year And here we go. You are Dizzy, an egg who wears boxing gloves and an adventurer hat. This is British character design. You and your girlfriend Daisy were outside one day looking for your hat, which you had lost. Compelling story. Daisy found the hat. However, suddenly and without warning, you were both taken away by the fairies. Uh, I mean, you were both captured by peeps who wanted eggs for breakfast or something. Daisy was captured by the evil wizard who lives in the Cloud Castle, and you were captured by the king and thrown into his dungeon with an idiot troll. You don your hat, which I guess you found, and vow to save Daisy from a fate worse than breakfast. Finding the security slightly lacking, you escape the dungeon easily. Now what? That is up to thou. Enjoy the game. At any time in the game, type question mark plus I enter for the inventory engine to show up. To use something on an object, just stand next to it and call up the inventory. To look at an object in your inventory, simply select it from the engine at any time during the game. And here we are, in the dungeon. This is one of many games of the late 90s that really fell in love with the inventory engine that somebody concocted where the cheat prompt becomes a necessary component of the game. So we open it up with question mark and actually do type in plus I every single time we wanna open a menu. And there we go, we've got an apple. Green apple, green is evil. That's an old 90s ZZT community catchphrase by Nader, don't ask. Skeleton of some poor sucker. Jug of water. 
Stay a loaf of bread. Very large troll. Who will not let us proceed. A lot of games, well not a lot, but several games around the late 90s, the dizzy ones, Pop comes to mind, uh, Edible Vomit, use this kind of inventory system, which is a fun little novelty, but also very annoying, and nine times out of ten, it would have worked just as well to touch objects. So we can just, if we pick something while we're standing next to an object, it'll actually get used on them. Let's give them that apple. Yeah, that's another thing. You are limited to just a few items in the original Dizzy games. And it's a platformer with momentum physics, and you're an egg, and you can break. So that's a bit rough. Give the apple to the troll. For me? You're so generous. I'd let you pass, but the king found out he'd torture me. However, you could escape through the fire using the water. This is a troll with some very literal orders. Don't let Dizzy through. And as long as he doesn't let Dizzy through, it's fine. So typing plus I every single time is just this necessary evil. In far later years, people found like old DOS macro programs and things, so they could just bind a key to it and actually have it do the typing. Um, I, I think one of like ZZO's, somebody with the reconstruction of ZZT, their early fork did just make it. So hey, if you press the I key on your keyboard, it sets the flag I, which would have the same effect. But I didn't bother to put that into my ZZT fork, so I have to do a lot of typing today. So, use water on fire. Puzzle solved. Thank you, troll. These games were pretty well received. I mean, enough that Nader didn't really plan to do several of these. He just got bored. I think the text file talks about how like he didn't even have the games on hand to reference. It was just going entirely off of childhood memories. So there's all sorts of hidden secrets and things. But yes, that really nice water animation. Don't think about the perspective too hard. Yeah, gold mask. Diamonds. Glowing S. The very ZZT prize to, to acquire. And I really don't have much experience with these games outside of ZZT. I'm pretty sure for like both times I've streamed the last two games afterwards, I just look up a long play of the originals and see what that's like. So you can definitely appreciate the non-platforming format that you get here. They're definitely accurate from what I can tell. I love that he included the water sound here too. Which unfortunately means that you have to find a bunch of hidden gems and things. Which the game doesn't even tell you are important until the very end. Okay, so here we're probably going to die to this rat because the code is very finicky and you have to get a chance to interact with it before it interacts with you. Hey, I pulled it off. As fun as it would be to try and crush this rat with a boulder, we'll just give it some bread. Tizzy's Gambit indeed. And into the mouse hole. The rat hole. And with that, we've escaped the dungeons and can start really exploring. These things open up a decent amount right away. And of course, solving more puzzles will expand that area a little more. Let's see, he also made them out of order because he did end up making a Treasure Island Dizzy's EZT. I suppose he preferred this one. There's a very cool bitey alligator over there. And noisy gator. Some great suits of armor and fancy poses.
probably a gem in one of these. There are walkthroughs for these versions specifically, written years and years ago by Foxman. And I did do my own playthrough of this one before, which ends up covering where all the gems that I missed were, so... We're not going to get stuck stuck. There's plenty of resources for this game. I do have to be a little excessive with finding things. Plenty of more ZZT references. All that for a gem. There's gonna be a gem here, I know it. There's gotta be. Yep, I just skipped past the message, but there was one hidden in the picture frame. I really do like Nader's sort of graphical style, especially in these older games, when it's not quite as developed. So you get this extremely perfectly blue river, and then you get this mess of detailed trees off to the side. So, that so yeah, even though this is not a platformer anymore, we can still very much die. That thing can crush us, and of course the alligator can take us out. This is the classic Nader wardrobe. I don't know why, but you will see this in pretty much every game he's made. Locked closet. Oh, this is one of those fancy ZZT mirrors. You look at your reflection, it looks back at you also. Watching it, watching, damn it. As you step farther and farther away. It's called Level of Detail. See one of your fellow villagers, Denzel, in the banquet hall. He shouldn't be here. Well, maybe you should go talk to him. Lots of fireplaces. Lots of classic candle animations. And one of these has a gem. Sure enough. Let's talk to our buddy here who is rocking out. I do like, too, since we're all eggs, the white smiley face works perfectly well, but Nader saw fit to even go with the blue background for everybody just to keep it consistent. Warped to another board. If you were paying attention, you might have seen that player clone. What are you doing here, Denzel? Don't you know? It's dangerous here. Hey, stay cool, Diz. I saw the king leave, and I thought I'd check out the castle. Daisy and I were captured. I was thrown into the dungeon, and Daisy's being held in the cloud castle. Oh, we've wondered where you two have got to. I'm too busy to help. But here's that rope you lent me last week. It's eggs all the way down. Can I get an egg in chat? I wanted to say that. I love his boombox too. It's very 90s. Thank you for the sake. Knock and enter. Dear Dizzy, how do you knock with boxing gloves on? So I love that that is indeed a puzzle. We don't have a whole lot right now. A boulder and some rope. Cannot throw the boulder. What's our rope say? Pretty strong rope. Oh no. Apologies. I filled up my water and then I did not bring my water back to my desk. I will be back in two seconds.
Okay, sorry about that. I have water. And on the one hand, these games, I imagine, are speeding things up. I suspect that this whole area is not a single screen on your EBC Micro or ZX Spectrum. Cool gold key. No, oh, this is a Dizzy stream. This is not a King's Quest stream. It was almost a King's Quest stream. I was very much considering it. Let's see, a jukebox. Little jam in the box. Big meaty bone in the attic? Why not? What's our meat say? A dog bone. Yeah, I also know at least one of the Dizzy games didn't include any kind of like lives system. You just had to start the game over if you died because they ended up making it so it would have been possible to soft lock otherwise. And that's a rough solution. Fortunately, these games are much more forgiving in this form. It's true, you definitely played this game for a very, very, very long time. I'm gonna go left, because I started going left. If I had thought to, I would have asked the chat. But you're stuck with me. I have to not die here, which is surprisingly easy to do. Even if it doesn't look it. More gems. Little... Ricochets is just like shrubs or something. It's a little like Ned the Knight. This is the Amarog? Amarog. Yes. Okay, well. Let's get ourselves killed. No. Well, you didn't give out of the bloody way. Amarok charges really fast and gores you. You're dead. He moves extremely fast when he starts moving. And I absolutely, absolutely love the fact that you get gored and there's just egg on the ground now. It's this white and yellow fake. You've been cracked open. There we go, just a bone. That'll keep him busy. More boulders. Dizzy is very strong in this game. It's, thankfully, the three item limitation of the original makes it fairly easy to adapt to the 10 flag limit that you get here. Which in this case means it's really 9, because that 10th flag is going to be used every time you pop open the inventory here. Let's see, I believe our boulders are for this. Danger, bridge out. And this here is our kind of hint that this is the interactable part. I do wish it was something visual and not that you had to actually touch because every other tile is just water. Let's chuck a boulder in here, into the river. Bridge rises. Rises again, one more. We don't have that last boulder, so. And now we get to this game's biggest flaw. Because it's not a platformer, when you have to turn around, you're not doing platforming, you're just walking. And this game has a very horizontal structure. I think at some point we're gonna have to like turn around and cross like 14 boards or something absurd to solve a puzzle. It's not great. If we really wanted to, we can just crank up the speed, which if it weren't for 
some of these dangerous critters I already would have. Yes, that's actually one of the gems, push in the top left corner, that looked different. So we will be going back to get that anyway once we get our last boulder. Here's another dangerous animal. Nope, too slow. Alligator eats me, and then all caps. This one is the picky one, actually. Maybe it's... I don't think you can use this. I think you do actually have to be right next to this thing. Sturdy rope. Nope. Oh my goodness. So you stand here. That's another downside to this is figuring out where exactly you need to be. Let's, nope, actually turn down the game speed and see if that's any help. No, it's really very immediate. Nope. Oh. No? Have to stand at a certain spot, maybe. Yeah, this is not... Ooh, timing and platforming. That sounds pretty dreadful. Let's see... Let's ignore the snoop and go for the fangs. That's not helpful. Please. If the eyebrows were not so big... We'll get eaten by it. It's definitely the... It is honestly the most frustrating part of the game by far. This stupid gator. I'm now scrolling through my old article. This puzzle is easily the most difficult. It's not, ch it's not a challenging to solve. Cool, great, several year old typo. The timing involved isn't obvious and is very tight. I probably spent 10 minutes dying to this alligator before finally getting to use my inventory without being immediately killed. And I am in that screenshot, standing here. Great, magically works. The snoot has been subdued. Oh, he looks so sad now, though. Let's actually turn up the speed a little. Let's see if we can get away with that. There we go. That'll speed things up a bit. Here's our last boulder. I feel very bad for this gator. I don't know. I have a hunch this is not dialogue in the original. But here's the Hoss. It's a very good ZZT dragon. Ooh, and it breathes fire. And it's it charred the landscape. Do I have... Do not have anything to get past this. I don't even think it's so much in-joke so much as it's Nader yelling. These kind of interjections are really in like all of his games. It's just, and some, some they land better than others. Here it's very much just like breaking away from its source material, but in his more original stuff, sometimes it'll actually like fit the character's personality. Yeah, see, this is where the speed is dangerous. We got our last boulder, so I guess maybe it's not as open as I thought. Scary eyebrows.
And the bridge is fixed. And we get a key. Another key. And sure enough, the one little odd spot is another hidden gem. Here's the abandoned warehouse. With some big boxes. With gems. And this, I'm sure, was like a horrible platforming segment. But now it's just a transporter. And now we're on a cloud to get a gem. And it's not really even hidden because of this transport. It makes it pretty clear you can go there. This is actually a pretty nice looking board with uh, silhouetted mountains in the background. And we're going to meet another new friend. I'm going to slow it down so we can read the dialogue. find more and more gems. There are 30 of them to get. This buddy, he's a dozy. Oh, what's the problem, Dizzy? Daisy's been egg-napped and is being held in the wizard's cloud castle. And no one will help me rescue her. Ah, uh, that's bad luck. I'll help you. Here's some sleeping potion. That should help. I thought you just said you were going to actually help me. Sorry, Dizzy. I'd love to. But it's far too nice a day to rescue maidens. These guys are all jerks. And he immediately goes back to sleep. So one thing I don't think anybody was doing in their ZZT games that now I think, oh my god, everybody needs to start doing is actually pacing their single lines of text now that people will sometimes actually read them out loud. So all this dialogue is really stilted since it just cuts off whenever and not at somewhat natural pauses. You don't get a lot of room in those messages, so I get why you wouldn't necessarily want to purposely cut them off earlier and have these scenes go longer, but... It's a, it's a challenge to act them out, to be sure. Although I think these days, people are much more willing to be like, no, just put the text in a window and let them read at their own pace. All right, we got. Well, I hope the sleeping potion is the solution. Otherwise, we're in trouble. You throw the flask at the dragon. As it inhales the intoxicating vapors, it goes to sleep, allowing you to pass. That does not look like a sleep to me, but okay. Well, you escaped from the castle and are now back at your treehouse village. Now you need to go save Daisy. So do so, fool. And this is a gorgeous looking board that illustrates one of my big problems with this game. And that's that we're still going to be doing plenty of backtracking. And now we have to navigate all around this scenery. Can't just go in even a vaguely straight line. We gotta dodge the well, we gotta dodge the tree roots, we gotta cut between the bushes here. It's a bit of a mess. Also, this is an extremely good well. It's a little big for the old folk. Sometimes the bushes are made out of water, but you know, that's just how it is sometimes.
It's run down building. The Yolkfolk Village Control Gate Center. Is it the gold key or is it the iron key? It's not the gold key. Is it the iron key? It's not the ironic key either. There's a lot of keys in this game. Unfortunately, we used all our boulders to raise a bridge. There's another dragon, and this one has a waggly tail. Oh, there we go. That's why the signpost sound effect sounds so familiar. Because I was hearing it in other ZCT games, apparently. His dragons are great. His gates are impassable. And honestly, the the worst victim of the backtracking thing is just the breakable walls for shading. At least, like, the well is this cool decorative element, and absolutely not an important plot element, to be sure. And I bet getting up here is a nightmare in the original. Don't know why eggs are living in trees. It seems very dangerous. They've got perfectly good ground down below. Can't really get in any of the buildings. I guess they eat the apples or whatever fruit these are. Maybe that's why they're up here. And that's why I was touching all the doors, because there's another gem under a doormat. Okay, one of these is probably the gate key. I, yeah, well, but do eggs put... I guess eggs are putting their eggs in trees, too. Key, gold key. Okay, so we have two keys and two locked, no, three locked gates. Yeah, we can't get anywhere. So that was a bust. I think it's it. Keep going this away. I like that this tree is actually a little blue. It's a non-conventional color choice. All right, here we go. See your hippie friend Dylan tripping out near a small collection of trees. Dude. Let's slow it down. Is this a cat? Keep walking into breakable walls. No, it is a pygmy cow. Which we are allowed to just pick up and take. There's no... Yep, there we go. There's no way that all this lettuce wouldn't have a gem. Pygmy cow. Mysterious droppings. Dizzy has no problem just grabbing it, apparently. I guess he is wearing boxing gloves. They're his nice gloves, though. What if his hat falls off and he has to put it back on again? Hey man, like what's happening? Please help me though, and I'm trying to save Daisy. But I can't find the castle. It's quite easy, man. Just remember how Jack found the castle. He is definitely 100% a stoned egg. flower in his headband. Oh, he's definitely a hippie. And here's the active volcano. Get more gems. And so we've reached both ends of the world now, from the pier to the volcano. And you know, if you forgot, if you didn't find the hidden gem on the pier board, at some point, you have to go all the way back. 
What do we have on us right now? We have keys and a cow. Okay. And a great description of its bowel movements. Geyser water. And another key. And yeah, let's, uh, there we go. Nope. Jump, we won't jump into the volcano, but we can get a gem out of it. I'm sure, again, everything in this game seems like it would be a very frustrating platform experience. So one of these keys, probably for the gatehouse. Well, oh, a bong key. Boy, I really hope it's this one, because otherwise you're going the wrong way. No, yeah, that's still just more gates. I thought this one mentioned a key or something, too. Let's see, what's, uh, what's left here? A whole lot of keys and nothing to open them with. Yeah, the lack of jumping is great, but there's still... But instead, by getting rid of the platforming, you just get a whole lot of walking. I think this gate had the same message. I'm pretty sure that both of them open up at the same time. Oh, you're kidding me. I just didn't try the invisible passage next to the doorknob, where I assumed that meant a locked door. Okay. There we go. This seems far more promising. Upon entering this room, you look around. There are four electric-looking metal boxes here, two of which are behind a closed gate. Each box has a keyhole. Yay, sir. Okay, let's... Gold, bronze, iron, yay, something, gold, bronze, gold, gold, thank goodness. Okay, that has solved our key problem. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about with it's it's so pointless. Instead of touching these objects, we are now typing several characters and picking from a menu. There's not really much of a benefit, but it was such a fad. And the worst part is, of course, that you can just use the space bar to shoot, and it's very possible to detect when the player does that, and there's so many of these games that don't have shooting in them, where they could have just had you press the space bar and still did the exact same little menu if they wanted to run with that. Like, well, that didn't open that gate. So now we gotta climb the tree again. It's such a good dragon. Fantastic dragon. Thank you for the sub riddles. I don't have any fancy special effects, so I appreciate that you still did it. Our gate is open.
And now we get to meet Grand Dizzy and get an Austin Powers reference in our object title here. I don't know why. I love that there's even another gate. Well, I guess if you actually do the keys one by one. That's horrible. Can you imagine? Can you imagine that when it's a platformer? There's a pickaxe here. Just climbing up all these trees, hitting a gate, having to turn back, eventually opening the gate, and then running into another one. Door knocker, sure. All right, hang on. What do you think our message is going to be for something called a knocker? A door knocker. He used to knock on doors with, of course. I'm amazed. Also, hidden in the tree. Another gem. Oop, I didn't change my speed here. Slow it down for Grand Dizzy. Afternoon, young Dizzy. You look frantic. Anything your old Grand Dizzy can do to help? Haven't you heard? Daisy's being held in the Cloud Castle, and I'm trying to save her. Just wait here, and I'll get my... hat. What? Thanks for offering to help. But I think you should stay. Almost natural pause. Well, if you think it's best, but take this crowbar! Thank you, Grandpa. Oh wow, I didn't realize that the creators are not fond of these. Because I know they, they are, like, considered classics of their time, in their region at least. They're just very, very frustrating. I mean, my, my stream announcement got retweeted by the Yolk Folk site. Like, there's a dedicated fan base to these to this series. Oop. Moved a little too fast there. It was a little weird with the teleport. Also, yep, messages are controlled by basically something that get that's invisible and put off in the corner of the screen, so they do take sats. And thanks to the fact that your game speed determines how long those messages last, it's actually possible to figure out what game speed the player is running at with them. Which is completely pointless, but it can be done. Okay, so we got ourselves a crowbar, a pygmy cow, a door knocker, and a pickaxe. I don't know what any of these are for. What door? Door in the castle? Probably. Oh yes, that's right. That's another thing. I have a horrible memory. As oof, anybody who watches these can tell you. So you have to go all the way back. Dragon is still asleep, having a nice nap. Gator is very forlorn. Hasn't even moved. Oh, actually, you know what? While we're here, happy Friday. Oh, no, no, never mind. You can't do this yet. We do actually have to go back to the basement at some point. But now is not the time. Now is the time for door knockers, which was this way? No, other way. This egg is getting his exercise. Okay. 
Brass door knocker. You attach the knocker onto the door and knock three times. The door opens. Give me a gem. And an old bucket. Sure. Okay. So... Now we need to fill the bucket with water from the volcano. So we get to do some locking. How's everybody's Friday? Because that seems like a good topic while we wait. That's okay. You're you're just in time for us to walk to a volcano. Is that that good good guys are water. Okay, now we have warm water. I don't remember why we need warm water. But we'll need it eventually. There's a bucket with water in it. Let's see. We've got a cow, a crowbar, oh actually, did we open up this gate down here? Impassable to a crowbar? Even Nader is calling out the crowbar. It wasn't as much of a cliche in 1991, I swear. Oh dear. No getting sick, please. So, did we get all of these, or is there still. Okay, there's still one. Let's check guide here real quick, because otherwise I'm going to be doing some wandering, no doubt. Ah, okay. Not a solution I would have guessed. Mmm, love that water sound every time I walk onto this board. The lid on the well. Obviously it was considered fitting to attach a lid. So, I mean, looking at it now, I see that it does have a lid on it, but that's kind of tough to notice otherwise. Let's actually pop that bad boy open and break the crowbar. Prepare ourselves for an actually amazing scene. This is some brilliant use of letters. Here we go. Welcome to the Upside Down. Fall down the well for a good five minutes. Suddenly you pop out on the other end and start to fall off the earth. Before you get very far, however, gravity catches up with you and makes you fall back towards earth. It seems the well was bottomless. It might actually be on the way back. Okay, so there's a trader. Would you like a cow? Man? I guess so. Um, an extremely Australian trader.
It will give me a bean. For a cow. Let's take our bean. Well, you thought that was water. It was actually forest. Ooh, there's our last key, though. It's silver. This is a world without zinc. And back we go. This, right here. This I'm upside down with just regular old unmodified ASCII is so good. You mop a pizden, W-I. It's glorious. I love it. It's the best thing. So that gives us our final key. I'm going to continue walking into breakable walls. This one, yes. Silver key. All that. Why is this tile solid? to get to the dragon. Uh, who hopefully won't kill me? There we go, another hoss. Mama hoss. It's the hoss. So what does it mean for this egg to be looking at an egg? Dizzy will not simply take egg. What do we do here? Our magic bean. Not helpful. So I guess apparently we do nothing? Do we not even get anything out of this yet? I guess not. I think we can plant the bean. I just gotta remember where to plant it. It might be by the volcano. That's definitely worth a shot since it's only a couple boards away. And what else do we got? We have the we don't have the cat. We have the bean, the water. Oh yeah, the manure, that would make sense. hot spring water that plants crave. Let's try our bean out. Plant the magic bean in the manure, but it's too dry and unable to grow. There we go. You throw the warm geyser water onto the bean. Nothing happens for a few seconds, but suddenly it grows at an amazing rate, spiraling through the clouds within minutes. And just because I noticed this one, I did have to look at the article I did on this ages ago. We can't throw ourselves into the volcano. We just have to fight for it. Okay, fine. Jump into the volcano. You jump into the volcano and die. It's important to do that. Up into the clouds. The magic castle.
That was a cute little tune for some reason. Another hidden gem. I think we're doing pretty good on them. There's 30 total, and you do have to get every single one. Try. Aha, another dragon egg. Leave it like the dog that it is. I don't think we can really do anything here yet. Yeah, there's a pit. Let's, why not? Let's die again. You jump across the pit. Unfortunately, you jump, don't jump far enough across the pit. After falling about 500 feet, you land on a big pit of spikes. Think about how that works in our cloud castle. Alternatively, I'll bet you're... Jeez, he thought of everything, huh? <laughs> Alternatively, I'll bet you're wondering how there's a 500-foot chasm in a cloud castle. Well, I'm not telling you, you dead person. Touché. So much for that. Back down we go. Let's give our dragon another egg. More eggs for the egg game. There we go, that's the new baby. Ah, okay. A helpful clue. Place the egg into the dragon's nest, and the mother dragon allows you to pass. It keeps on wagging. Aw, here's the troll from the start of the game here. Not you again, go away. I'm hiding, it's all your fault. What do the baby eggs look like? When do they get their boxing gloves? Barney Rubble. A big pile of fallen rubble impedes your progress. Okay, well, at least that's an easy one. Especially with our inventory full of nothing but a pickaxe. Next makes light work of the rubble. A thick old rug. What it was doing in an old mine shaft, I couldn't fathom. Take it, I took everything else. Yes, you did. Oh, there we go. That's a horrifying thought. Birds hatch from eggs, eggs hatch from birds. Alright. Actually, what's our carpet say here? Rug is really thick. You could use it to cover anything up. Hmm. Okay, well. Let's slow it down again. Thick rug. You throw the rug across the pit, making a stable makeshift bridge. It'll be safe to cross now. Yep. It's safe. And now for this part, which is horrible. Wow, that went way better than I expected. Ah, the last one. What do you think happens when you get impaled by the big sharp spikes? Hmm, it's end game time. I mean, thanks to how janky this is, I just ran behind a spike, but sure, that's a lot better than the alternative. Uh, 
And there's a convenient exit here. First try, every time. Voice, not that voice, help. So that's a reference to Seng's games, where one of his characters is named Voice, and he would constantly have to do that. I don't think it was a joke, I think it was just, no, no, that's the character's name. It is not a mysterious voice. Sounded like Daisy, I'm getting closer. What now? In this puzzle, I use the term loosely, you have to push all the boulders into that thin little pit over there. See it? When you've done that, the door will open. Oh, and don't step into the pit yourself. It'll do bad stuff. By the way, unlike most side-scrollers these days, you can't save your game while playing. So, we didn't get away with no platforming in this conversion. Platform boulder concept was inspired by everyone's favorite toothpick crank god. The torch puzzle in the Adlo for Megazooks. Thanks, dude. I appreciate the credit. Here we go. What fun. What fun. Push boulder, please. There we go, okay. These are objects, so they actually do have gravity. Which I guess makes sense, because this wouldn't work very well otherwise. So boulders go in pit. Okay, well that one's not doing so much gravity. It's got Looney Tunes gravity. I'm gonna start knocking these into the pit before it gets awkward. Was this red one... I guess this red one is special? Because I obviously have to block that tiny pit. This is at least reasonably responsive. And you get some wild air control. Ooh, these jumps. You'd almost think Dizzy was a platform hero. And will I get crushed? Now here comes the tough part. ZZT can't tell what object is blocking things, so if this box gets crushed, Dizzy gets crushed. I think we just pray. First try, every time. That air control is wild. Alright, what happens? Whammo! Oh no! Why did it play the sound twice? Now we get to actually see what Dizzy can do. We got this tall ceiling. Some pretty high jumps. Honestly, genuinely one of the better ZZT platforming engines I've played. Oh, I definitely got like a double jump there somehow. Hang on. Well, it's not by just holding up. There, sometimes you just get a boost. I can't tell what's making that happen. Oh, come on, now my platforming is failing. Ah. You can very much push that into a corner and just be stuck. Is the spike ending any different? 
scrambled eggs for dinner. This one that time. Mm, I don't trust pushing multiple boxes in a row. I don't think that'll work. And it'll probably soft lock. So you gotta be gentle. Oh, yeah, that would actually do it. The invisible blocks are definitely do have to just be objects with how they're working. So they do move. I mean, it's definitely related to that. Alright, I'm not playing with that anymore. Good job, Dizzy. Now we're free. And there's Daisy! Dizzy, I knew you'd come. You don't get a cutscene here. Prison brand imitation gruel. This wonderful floating cage, which has no lock. But it does have a lever. Ow. Fortunately, not a dangerous fall. Thanks for saving me. Well, Daisy doesn't hang about. She leaves and heads through the village. However, it seems that she wants you to collect 30 coins so you can buy yourselves a house so you can live in it. That's what houses are for, yes siree. There's 30 gems stuck in random places in the game. Some are hidden, some aren't. I'll assume you've already found at least 12, okay? Okay. Oh, by the way, there's a gem in the dungeon. Just thought I'd mention it. So we did pretty good, honestly. 26 out of 30. Thank you for the sub, I appreciate that. We've got four to go, and I do have a list to reference. So let's see here. There's obviously there's the one in the dungeon that just told us about that doesn't actually appear until you rescue Daisy. There's one behind the painting which we got. We got the one by touching a chair in the banquet hall. Got we got both of those. One of the moat. Ah, okay, that's one I missed. Okay, so we're definitely heading to the castle. Get ready to do some walking. If you actually do go through the village now, Daisy will be there waiting outside of your soon-to-be new home. Dragon is still asleep. Oh, actually, there's a secret on this board. And I don't mean a gem. Here's the secret artwork board. The very cool disco scene. The best part of any Dizzy game, to be sure. This is what Disco looks like. Alright. 
There's gem number one. Three left. Yeah, it just appears. You can't get it early. Which is... Yeah, since the troll's gone. It's kind of awkward, honestly. Uh, before I go this way... Well, actually, no, there's one more up here that I think I missed. West Wing. West Wing. There's one under the pillow. Okay. Progress. East Wing, one in the chest. I would have gotten that. Tower. One's in plain sight and one's in a box. Got that. Bridge, one in plain sight and one in the second bush from left. Got that. Warehouse, one's in plain sight, one's in a box, one's on a cloud. Here, there's one in a quote, round thingamibob. Gate facility, plain sight. Entrance to village, plain sight. Okay, so I think we need to go back to the village. Sounds like there's one missing there. And just one more. There's indeed another bush gem. Somewhere. It does not. There a coordinated first village section, I hope. These are not striking me as bushes so much as trees. Let's check elsewhere. Mm. Ah, okay. I am going to just cheat. Instead of walking across, yeah. Instead of walking across, like, four boards. Oh, that's right. I can't no-clip off of the edge of a board. Because I didn't code that right. Uh, any board that has a cutscene will have something muting the duplicator, so it'll get quiet. Oh, but yeah, actually, why is there a giant audio buffer? Oh, that was probably from just, like, walking through a bunch of water with no clip. That's my guess, at least. Anyways, let's stop the no clip. Bush. It's a little different from the others. In what way, actually? It looks pretty much like the, all the others. There's one more. In the middle tree, got those. Got the lettuce one. Oh, <laughs> way to catch up, audio buffer. Australia, in plain sight. Dragon Cave, plain sight. Volcano, one in plain sight, one on top of the volcano. And in mind, Cloud Castle. Cloud, Cloud Castle. Ah, oh, is it that? Sounds like there's another secret here in the mines.
Actually, yeah, the, the complete emptiness of this board probably should have tipped me off. There we go. More cool secrets. Gold nugget. Cyan smiley face. Another glowing S. Glowing diamond. That didn't give me a gem, though. Ooh, what one did I legit miss here? Alright, chat. We're gonna play a game of... Oh god. Please tell me which of these... Descriptions from the walkthrough. Sounds like something I missed. Dungeon. After you rescue Daisy, go to the dungeon, there will be a gem. We definitely got that. Castle Stairway. Touch the picture three times. Definitely got that. Banquet Hall. Touch the end chair. Definitely got that. The moats. There's one in plain view, but also one in a torch holder. I might have missed that. I know I was touching torches early on. Also, we are not walking that far. That, that would do it. Gem in the holder. Every time I want to teleport. Okay, we're here. Hope you enjoyed our fast travel. And now, we can start a new life with Daisy in our fabulous new home. The. Oh, there, right there. These are our fireworks for all our new subscribers today. The egg. I wish. Well, you found all 30 gems, and now the two of you can find a treehouse to live in. You won the game. Concept and original layout by the Oliver Twins. BZT conversion by Zenith. Beta testing by several people. Good for you. That was the part where I end game you without throwing some random insult with it. First though, sit back and enjoy the fireworks. See you later, lulz. I like that the fireworks look pretty good at the Super game over speed, actually. And a good heart, too. So that's Dizzy. Fantasy World. Play real quick. Because I'm sure somebody else here will be curious. Uh, let's see, how long? Oof, 42 minutes. Well. Here's a... Long play of the Amiga version of this game, if you want to see it with all the actual platforming necessary. I like these fireworks, though. It's a very good ending screen and a very good heart. That is Dizzy. He's got boxing gloves and a hat. He collects gems and returns eggs to dragons, and he is an egg. So that's going to be it. Let's move off of this I lied you suck screen. And say hello to our credits. Alright. So, thank you everybody who was watching this. I hope you enjoyed getting a, a taste of what ZCT can do when you try to actually outright convert an existing game into ZCT. Normally the results are not great, but... It, honestly, it works here. Most of my complaints for this probably still apply to the original. Just long walks, which turn into terrifying platforming challenges in the platforming version. But it's just a fun little world to run around into. The game itself is, like, the ZZT game itself is just fine. There's no major issues other than long walks. Even when it did try doing its own platform, it did a pretty good job of it, too, I'd say. So that's going to be it for now. Uh, if you enjoyed this game in particular, again, I'm just going to link 
correctly. Play the comp compilation version. You'll have a much better time. I honestly think that that wizard fight in one of the other games is the only thing that gets changed, but just to be safe, stick with that versus the original releases. I imagine the only change here was just that it said, yes, the secret disco board is still here, as opposed to saying, welcome to my secret disco board. And if you... actually, that one doesn't have any of the articles really attached. If you actually just search for Dizzy over on the museum, you'll get links to the other games, which I'll have, have walkthroughs by Foxman from back in the day. And the other two Dizzy games, Magic Land and Treasure Island for ZZT, also have older live streams if you just want to watch a playthrough of what those are like. But they are really fun games. All three of them are worth trying out for yourself. Just expect some occasionally obtuse puzzles. This one I think is probably definitely the best, but the others aren't bad. That's going to be it for now. We'll be back again next Friday with another poll game, and in the much nearer future we'll be back Sunday, 2 o'clock Pacific, 5 o'clock Eastern, continuing our playthrough of the Chrono Wars series where we've finally broken through the original pack of like eight of them, or was it seven? But we're, we're going on to the individual releases at this point. So hopefully that means good things. It's a wild time travel adventure, and if you don't feel like watching several hours of the previous parts, I promise you, you can jump in and follow along, because it's nonsense. There's not a whole lot to follow. That's, that'll be it for now. I'll see y'all Sunday, Friday, both days, later. See ya!